Joe Buck, the Hall of Famer, Troy Aikman, right there. Aaron Andrews is coming up. Well, here we are in week 14, and the NFC East could, in some ways, be determined here this afternoon. You think about the Dallas Cowboys. They've won four straight, and that winning streak started in Philadelphia. Now Philly needs a win, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's talk Dallas. They're coming off the best defensive performance that any team has put out there this year when they shut down Drew Brees and the Saints a week ago. Yeah, I held them to 10 points, and it's really why this team is as confident as they've been all season long. The defense has given them that belief. Of course, the offense has come along as well. I think Dak Prescott is playing some of his best football. And then Ezekiel Elliott, everything goes around him. They've been able to block better for him. They've gotten back to doing the things that they've been doing the last couple of seasons, and it's paid off for them in this four-game win streak. Well, the tables have turned. Talked about the Eagles needing this game, much like the Cowboys needed a win in Philadelphia to really have any hope the rest of the year. The Eagles have it all out in front of them, but it has to start with a win here today. Well, they're pretty beat up on the defensive side of the ball, as all Eagle fans know. And on the offensive side of the ball, the last two weeks, in those wins, they've been more balanced. They haven't relied as heavily on Carson Wentz. They've been able to get Josh Adams going in the run game. That's going to be important to have some balance against this defensive front that Dallas possesses. Well, Doug Peterson talked about the importance of this game with his team. For more on that, down to Aaron Andrews. Yeah, Doug Peterson saying he would address his team about what was on the line. And during pregame warm-ups, Joe, we saw leader Malcolm Jenkins adding to his head coach's message. He told me he said to his guys, let's not pretend what's going on here. We have an opportunity to clean up the mess we made this season. Who wouldn't want a chance like that? And for the Cowboys, Demarcus Lawrence saying he told his guys, the Eagles are still the champions despite what's happened to them this season. We want to get where we want to go. we got to knock out the champs. It's going to take a great mindset and some toughness today, Joe. All right, Aaron. Well, the Eagles won the toss. They defer. So Dallas will start this game with the football. And it will be that early test for that injury ravaged secondary of Philadelphia. We'll get into that on the first possession for the Cowboys. Glad you're with us today on Fox. Jordan Lewis will bring it out. Cannot make it to the 20. Well played downfield. Eagles say the ball's out. And no indication of a fumble yet. Is this game going to start with a turnover? It stays with Dallas. And here's another look. Right now, they're saying no fumble. And that ball is that ball's out. It's definitely out. Now, a clean recovery. That ball was definitely coming loose before Jordan Lewis got to the ground. Let's see if Doug Peterson throws the challenge flag. Side of it. Wow, that looks to me like that's Eagles ball. And he's now throwing the flag. What a start this could be for Philadelphia on the road. Boy, you're not kidding. Uh, these are the kind of breaks that the Eagles are going to need to get during this game and to start the game with something like this is big. But again, you need a clear recovery to give the ball to Philadelphia. Sure looks like it, though, doesn't it? Clearly the ball's out. Jenkins is the one who knocked it out. We just heard the report from Aaron, the emotional leader, certainly of this defense, if not this team. And then the pileup of bodies. It looks like only the Eagles are around the football, and those bodies went down for it, but no clean look at it. Yeah, there's there's not a clean recovery, but I'm with you, Joe, that there's not a defensive player anywhere in the vicinity of the ball, but yet there's three Eagles. There's Leroy Reynolds is right there. Looks like the ball's between his legs. Mike Pereira, what do you see down there? Well, there's two ways that you can have a clear recovery. One being if you actually see Philadelphia with the ball, and then the other is if all of the guys in the pile are on the same team. And, um, and so that's what they have to look at. Now, naturally, 
you can see that the ball is out. But if you are also, if you're also Philadelphia, you've got to win both sides of this. So if they rule that this is a fumble, which it is, if there's no clear recovery and it stays in the fumble, they're going to lose the challenge. Of I all just, the guys, Mike, who came away with the ball on that replay, it was Camus Grugier Hill, who was the one who provided the bulletin board material when he said look at Dallas's history they always choke and we'll go down there and make them choke that was during the week and then he apologized to it mainly to his head coach he said I did step out of line with respect to coach Peterson they met on it and it looked like Rouge Hill He's the one that came out of there at least after the play was blown dead with a football and we're going to get the call right now from Cleet Blakeman on the Malcolm Jenkins forced fumble. After review the play there was a fumble on the play however we do not have a clear recovery by the by the kicking team therefore the ruling in the field stands as called the first down. Well there you go Mike the two parts clearly a fumble all eagles around the ball but they don't get the call and let's remember that you must control the ball with your hand or arm if you have the ball between your legs that is not control so they just didn't see anything that indicated control before the scrum coming out of the scrum doesn't mean anything i think they did the right thing with staying with the call well doug peterson clearly worth the challenge he's now one for four on challenges this year 10 for 21 in his three-year career and they have only one challenge left in the game which is something you and i were talking about seemingly throughout the entire cowboys saints game a week ago thursday yeah that's a that's a hard one for for the Eagles to digest. I know all those Eagles fans at home that are watching that to, to, to watch that and for the Eagles not to have the ball just doesn't seem like the right call. Here's Elliott. He gets a yard. Dak Prescott at the controls. His quarterback rating for the year 95.4. But you look at this stretch of the last five games and that coincides with the trade for Amari Cooper and the numbers are fantastic with a completion press percentage up near 73. Second down and nine. Roll is out on the edge to Gallup and the rookie a short game and well played out there by Sidney Jones a gain of two and here's the turnaround the first seven weeks a record of three and four over the last five the only loss is that next game after that three and four start a Monday night loss here at home to Tennessee a win at Philly, a win in Atlanta, and home wins against Washington and New Orleans. Third and seven. Prescott throws in the pass, incomplete. Intended for Amari Cooper, and there was Sidney Jones again. Well, Sidney Jones had safety help, and so he was able to play underneath it. It's too deep, man under, and he never turns around. If Sidney Jones just turns around knowing that he had to have known the ball was in flight based on the route by Cooper, if he turns around, Ball hits him right in the head. Well, credit this Philadelphia Eagles defense with all those injuries in the secondary. 13 different defensive backs have started a game this year. They don't get that early turnover, but they get a three and out. And a beautiful spiraling punt that turns over and takes a Cowboys bounce down inside the 20. To the 15 and a punt of 63 yards a season long for Chris Jones. And now Carson Wentz, who is less than a year removed from the surgery to repair the two torn ligaments in his left knee. The numbers are pretty good, but when you consider where he was a year ago at this time, 33 touchdowns. Just seven interceptions. It pales in comparison, but he's still trying to get right. Yes, he is, and won't be right really until next season. That's what they oftentimes say when you've got a knee reconstruction, but he, he's he been helped by this running game. And here's an early look at it is Josh Adams with a nice start to the day. 
Broke a couple of tackles, went around a Wouzie, got eight, and a nice start from scrimmage for Philadelphia. And we look at this offense. They rank 17th overall. They're number 23 with the rush, but they have a new feature back. Over the last handful of weeks, and Josh Adams, we just saw him, and they got Golden Tate involved more in their home win against Washington. Yeah, Golden Tate's first game, a little bit like Amari Cooper. His first game was when they played each other back a month ago. He only had two receptions in that game, but he's coming off his most productive day last Sunday. They start with two runs, first one for eight, and this one goes backward. As Jeff Heath got through in a loss of two, third down coming up. I don't think anybody expected this Cowboys defense to do what they did against the New Orleans Saints, but all year long they have had terrific stats. They're young, especially with those two linebackers, 54 and 55. You see in the middle of your screen, Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch. And the Cowboys defensively, they won this down against the Saints. It's why they held them to 10 points. Overall for the year, they have struggled, but they've gotten a little better here in recent games. is caught. That's Ertz. A first down for Philadelphia. Catch number 94 on the year for the stud sixth year tight end. This is F post right there and uh, it's a it's a well run route. It's difficult to defend the way that they released it with the other tight end and Zach Ertz is obviously their guy and had a huge game. The last time these two teams met, he's on quite a pace this year to set an all-time record for receptions amongst tight ends. Starts off with a good conversion. Here's Adams. Spun around and gets a block from Golden Tate. What a good run by Adams, and it was a block by Tate that sprung him. He went around Jeff Heath. He got away from him, carried it for 24. And this was well done. Well, Jeff Heath is around the line of scrimmage. He made the play earlier. This time he's not able to. And there's the block by Golden Tate that springs him. Hey, right now, Josh Adams, he's had a couple nice runs. Has shown some good moves. It's hard to, it's hard to traverse the field in this league and pick up those kinds of yards. He obviously was helped by the perimeter block, but off to a nice start. Now Sproles in the backfield for Philadelphia. And a toss. To Darren. And a short game. Well played by linebacker Damian Wilson. A gain of just two. Sproles, his second game back. He played in week one. Hurt his hamstring. Hadn't played until last week against Washington. And on his first carry, gets just a couple. And he did not have a reception in that win on Monday night. And, and I would expect him to be a little bit more involved. They're being cautious with him, I understand. But I would expect him to be a little bit more involved in the passing game here in this one. Second and eight. Here's Goddard and the rookie tight end overthrown with a rookie linebacker, Vander Ash on him. Goddard had a he had a step too, and, and we've seen Wentz miss some of these opportunities when when he's had guys open for an opportunity for a big play down the field. But that's a good matchup with Leighton Vander Esch, whether it's him on Goddard or a back. He's a big guy, but he can really run and he does a nice job in coverage as well as against the run. Third down and eight. is sacked. Randy Gregory, he's been hot. That's his fourth sack in the last five games, and that'll force a punt. Well, they sink Jeff Heath down, so it's called 11 robber is the coverage. It's man across the board with a free defender then in the middle. The Eagles are trying to run that crossing route, a natural picking action. Good call versus man. But the Cowboys played it exceptionally well, and then the pass rush gets the win. Fair catch by Beasley. Look at you over there talking ball. 11 robber at a post. <laughs> what the heck's going on? What you eat for breakfast? No score early. 
you could take the treatment of your ulcerative... For head coaches, there wasn't a lot of love lost between <laughs> Jimmy yeah. and Buddy. Yeah, that's for sure. Ryan's big Aikman fan. Back in the day, here's Elliott. He breaks through for a first down carry as he gets 13, and he has the luxury of the five-time Pro Bowl and two-time All-Pro left tackle Tyron Smith back in there after missing the last two games with the next stinger. And as you can see, he's also been bothered by a bad elbow, a bad back, so he's been off now and raring to go against Philly. Yeah, they thought he was going to be able to play last Thursday night. They got into pregame warm-ups, and uh, he just couldn't make it. Cameron Fleming got the second start. Press got in trouble, able to flip it to Gathers. And what could have been a big loss ends up just as a loss of one. For more on Tyron Smith, down to Aaron. You mentioned the stinger. You mentioned the right elbow. A lot of conversation about the uh, elbow brace. That's really a knee brace, guys. Why is he doing it? Normal elbow brace doesn't fit that elbow one. A knee one does. <laughs> and let me tell you, the conversation on the Eagles sideline during pregame warm-ups, players asking me, is that for real? Is that for real? i got to see this knee brace on his elbow. Looks like it fits. It does. <laughs> Might be a little tight. <laughs> Second down and 11. Here's Elliott. Nice gain on second and 11 of seven. We'll look at this offense that checks in 25th in the league, but the number's much better over the last five games. And they're sixth in the rushing department. Ezekiel Elliott starts the day number two in the league, right behind Todd Gurley. There are the backs and receivers still missing Jeff Swaim out with a broken wrist, their top tight end. Third down and four. Prescott throw is behind the tight end, but a nice catch by Jarwin for the first down. Just his eighth catch of the season, and that was a good one. Sure was a great adjustment by him as he's going to come across on the drag and if he's able to hit this in stride he's going to be able to split those defenders and pick up a few more yards he's happy to just come away with that catch should have been a, a much easier throw for Dak Prescott but a nice conversion to keep this drive alive Prescott good protection has a man Gallup and he's been getting more and more involved the rookie wide receiver and the third round pick from Colorado State and they're going to give him enough for a first down here's that Eagles defense and what's been shocking and again they're playing without Tim Jernigan who's played in only one game still out with back spasms they don't have Jordan Hicks they just put Jalen Mills on IR 47 it's a difference in stopping the run. That's been the problem for Philadelphia. As Elliott on first down over the right side gets five. Here's Carissa Thompson with a game break. Thanks, Joe. Chiefs Ravens tied at 24 in overtime. Harrison Bucker hits this 35 yard field goal. The Ravens are going to get a shot. RG3 in for the injured Lamar Jackson. His pass falls incomplete on fourth and 22. Chiefs win and clinch a playoff spot. Joe? And to stay on top, Carissa, in that AFC top seed position at 11 and 2, and we will see them against the LA Chargers on Thursday night here on Fox from Kansas City. Prescott airs it out. Flag is down. Gallup the target, and the flag is thrown in the direction of the coverage on Michael Gallup. We'll see who it's against. And we'll see that's usually on the defense, Rasul, Rasul Douglas. See what they personal foul. Gavin the face mask. Defense. Number 32. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down Dallas. And there it is on the right side of your screen. Just a little grab to turn the head of Michael Gallup. Well, Rasul Douglas, he's had a tough time. And the last game against Amari Cooper, he really struggled. They had him turned around all over the place. He didn't get involved in the in the run game in terms of tackling and he's going to have to have a good game for them to have an opportunity in this one. Oh, 
First down from just outside the 32. A little cutback by Elliott and big yardage on first down. A gain of five. As Jason Garrett in his eighth full year. He's taken the Cowboys to the playoffs twice. He's 29 and 15 over the last three years, but you see his home record two and five against Philadelphia. As the Cowboys try and extend this streak to five straight here in 2018. Elliott, a bobble, and then a dive. And we'll see where they put it. And they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 25 at the end of just two. Third down and a couple coming up. If you look at the, the Eagles defensively, you know, they've not been able to get the, the takeaways that they that they had a year ago, and it obviously has been a struggle for Jim Schwartz in this unit with all of the injuries that they have had, but where they've been good is keeping people out of the end zone when they've gotten down into this area of the field, and right now we'll see whether or not they can make a key stop here and what Jason Garrett may elect to do if they do. Pass is caught. Flag is down, and that on the far side of the field is the tight end Jarwin again. Now they may get a hit on Dak Prescott. That was the flag that came in late, it appears. And whether or not the Eagles maybe were offsides on the first flag that came. Let's take a look at it. It's all out blitz. Cox there are two who fouls gets the hand to the head. On the play. Offside, number 77. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 91. Penalty's half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. So the three time Pro Bowler, Fletcher Cox, is guilty of the foul on the hit on Dak Prescott. Here's another look. Yeah, he had a clean shot to, to come in and. You know, that's those are those are tough penalties on these defensive players, but just knowing what the rules are, you just can't get your hands anywhere near. But even without that, they've gotten Michael Bennett offside, so it's going to be a first down regardless. And they completed it to Jarwin. First and goal from just inside the 10. Prescott keeps well played by Bennett. He was the one guilty of the offside, and Michael Bennett, the three-time Pro Bowler, what a play, loss of four. Talk about the difference in stopping the run. Over the first eight games, 84 yards a game. That's what this defense for Philly gave up. Last four, over 140 per and six yards per attempt. Yeah, there was a time, like even, even last year, you know, they were much better against the run. Teams haven't stuck to the run the way that you would think, knowing the way that the Eagles have given up rushing yards. This game isn't going to be one of those, however. Here's one for Gallup. A lot of contact, no flag. Gallup covered by Sidney Jones. And it'll be third down and goal. Yeah, so you look at the Cowboys when during this four-game win streak, the first three games of that, they were really good down here in the red zone. Overall on the year, they have not been, but they were six of ten through the first three wins. But last week, last Thursday night, against New Orleans they were just one for five so for a defense that played so great and holding the Saints to just 10 points Cowboys offensively really should have been able to run away with that but they just couldn't come away with touchdowns down here right now big third down for them we're down and goal Prescott to Elliott he's got a long way to go he's hit from behind hit from in front Nigel Bradham made the initial stop and good work by the Philly defense and that play by Michael Bennett got it started on first down. It'll be fourth down. That's really a great job by this defense. And again, red zone defense for the Eagles steps up. They're fourth in the league in stopping teams once they get inside the 20-yard line. And they do a good job of rallying to Ezekiel Elliott and forcing this field goal attempt of 28 yards. Well played by Philadelphia in the red zone defensively. First points of the day belong to Dallas. 
coverage on this beautiful December day outside brought to you by State Farm as Corey Clement is waiting for the kick for Maher. I'll show you why this game is so important. We have to look at the playoff picture here in a moment in the NFC and a big game coming up on Monday night. Big one later tonight as well at Soldier Field. Clement will bring it out. Try the left side and have room. Good start to the drive out to the 36 for Philadelphia. The Rams will play at the Bears later, and they need a win to stay out in front of the Saints. Remember, they lost head-to-head -head in New Orleans earlier in the year. There's Chicago at 8-4. and four. The Dallas Cowboys leading the East at the moment. Seattle will play Minnesota in Seattle tomorrow night. And the Eagles are definitely in the hunt at 6-6. Six and six. And Their destiny in their own hands, even in the division. We'll get into that in a second. That was Ertz in motion. Wentz finds Sproles. Louisier made the play. Game of three. If Philadelphia wins this game, they walk out of this stadium with an identical record of seven and six, but a better division record than the Dallas Cowboys. But Doug Peterson's team has a tough schedule upcoming. They're at the Rams at home against Houston. They finish at Washington a little easier road the final three for Dallas. Here's a good piece of work by Clement at least able to corral the snap after it went off the hands of Wentz. And a loss on the play of four as Malik Collins brings down Clement and he's hurt. Uh, another. Another injury after that big return to set up this drive. Here's a ball, and at times you watch this, and it just seems like Kelsey fires him back on Wentz pretty hot, and they're lucky to get that one back. They'll check on Clement, and we'll take a break. And by K Jewelers, for all the moments for love forever. Corey Clement, just a nasty-looking injury to his right leg. The knee got twisted. He's getting looked at. It's third down and 11 for Philadelphia. The Eagles have already lost Jay Ajayi. They lost him week five. They just got Darren Sproles back. That didn't look good. Again, out of the shotgun. Blitz coming from Smith. Pass is incomplete. With Golden Tate, the closest one to it, maybe Nelson Aguilar, but that throw was between those two and really close to neither one of them. Well, and Golden Tate, you had really what you wanted. They matched up Byron Jones on Zach Ertz, so a good move by the Dallas Cowboys, putting their best corner on the threat offensively, but it's another missed opportunity for, for Carson Wentz. He's got a chance on Golden Tate. He's open. He's got field to make that throw, and it's not even close. It's a three and out for Philadelphia, and they may have lost Clement. Beasley from the 15 gets swallowed up, and there's a flag down back inside the 40 near the line of scrimmage. to kick holding receiving team number 45 penalty been forced half the distance to the goal line from the end of the kick first down Dallas they get the hold on Rod Smith the ball will go back inside the 10 and we'll be right back after this from Bose
talked about the opportunity for Philadelphia with a win here on the road against their rival. For Dallas, if they get a win, their winning streak will be at five. They'll have a two-game lead in the division in the head-to-head -head over Philadelphia after sweeping the season series. This drive starts just outside the seven. Here's Elliott. A little breathing room on that first down play. As Nathan Gary makes the stop, uh, catching a spin of four. Well, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles right now. This is the second possession that they've started the series with Fletcher Cox on the sidelines. He did come in when they got inside the 30-yard line. He came in off the bench and, and played that last possession. But he's, he's a guy who's played the most amongst the defensive front. He plays over 80% of the snaps. They're trying to keep him fresh, I'd imagine, to get into that second half, particularly the fourth quarter. Here's Elliott, Camus Bruget Hill. There to make the stop with Brandon Graham, and that will end quarter number one in a three to nothing battle in the NFC East. Well, one of them's here. Hey, he's right there to my right. It's never a fun afternoon having to play on that group. I can promise imagine. you. Reggie White, Jerome Brown, Clyde Simmons, Seth hey, Jr., Eric Allen, Andre Waters. You see those faces in your sleep. Third down and six. Prescott jumps, throws, pass caught. Where was the knee with the reach? And they're giving Elliott enough for a first down. It was close. Good work by Prescott to stay up and alive and find Elliott. Well, Malcolm Jenkins is is there, and he, he has an opportunity to, to make the tackle. I, I really think, looking at this game, the Eagles, for them to win, this has to be their best game of the year in tackling. They've not been good for the most part this season. They were not good the last time these two teams met, and that's another example of it. That's where the Saints were good at limiting the yards after contact. How about that hole for Ezekiel Elliott out across the 35? On first down, gets 20 yards. So they had a chance to make a stop then on third down. They don't. They come off of that, and you see the job that that offensive line does. The center, Joe Looney, he's able to mash it down. One foot in the ground, and Ezekiel Elliott then takes the cut. Hey, he is he is running the ball awfully well. I was talking about the Saints. They did a good job on him, and they, they limited him, and they attacked him, and they won the line of scrimmage. Here's Rod Smith. Dragon out there to make the play a gain of just one. Aaron? couple of injury updates for you guys from the Philadelphia Eagles. Cornerback Sidney Jones over on the sidelines for quite some time. He is questionable to return with a hamstring. And for the running back, Corey Clement, they took him back into the locker room. We saw that knee injury. See him upset right there. They are checking out that knee. He is questionable to return. Well, for Sidney Jones, he played against Washington, but had missed four of the previous five games with a bad hamstring. So he's back on the sideline in that thin secondary for Philadelphia. Second and nine. Blitz coming off the corner. Pass is caught by the tight end, Schultz. And the big rookie spins to the Philadelphia 45, a gain of 16. It's a great job by Dak Prescott recognizing the blitz. And then also the tight end here, Schultz, who he gets his head around right away, as you're going to see. They bring the linebacker. He knows that they vacated a space. And he turns his head around, and Prescott puts it on him. That's the, that's the way you beat the blitz. 47. All right, here we go, 47. And no, 53. 5-3. 53, 5-3. Take it to Elliott. Pass is juggled and caught by Jarwin. It's been a tight end heavy early going here for the Dallas Cowboys. You see the overall record in the NFC East for the four teams and where they sit with divisional play. The story kind of remains the same for Philadelphia. The fewest first quarter points scored in the league this year at 28. Had an opening possession touchdown against Washington last week. They're shut out here. Trailing by three, and Elliott gets two, two and a half yards. 
to bring up third down. I think it's a good point. The, the Eagles score the fewest points in the first quarter. The Cowboys allow the fewest points in the first quarter. So I think if you're Doug Peterson, you probably have to feel pretty good about the fact that it's just three to nothing. And now whether or not this defense can can make a stop. Like I said, a missed tackle by Malcolm Jenkins, and they don't pick up the first down there. And then they've been able to get some nice plays. Three for five on third down of the Cowboys here in the first half. Prescott finds Beasley inside the 25. Now four of six on third down for a team that's been just under 50% over the previous five games. Well, good route by Cole Beasley. He's working against Craven LeBlanc, another one of those guys who wasn't even on the team four weeks ago. And he's been asked to, to man the slot position, and you can go across the board, really. And there's nobody that matches up. Every guy for the Cowboys, man-to-man, -man, is better than the guy that's lining up opposite of him. This defensive front, really, as it has been all year, has to be the key and has to be able to disrupt Prescott. Mari Cooper's been shut out. This one's picked in the direction of Cooper, and Rasul Douglas has it. Big play for Philadelphia out across the 15. His second of the year, a bit underthrown, and Douglas was there. It's a takeaway, just the 10th for this Philly D at the right time. You see that top line on that bottom row there. Dak Prescott, his first interception over the last 165 pass attempts. It is a beautiful play by Rasul Douglas. And we'll show it to you in a moment. No interceptions during the four-game win streak for Dallas for Dak Prescott. And this took a really great play to make that turnover happen. Wentz. Got a yard. Back to the interception. Yeah, it said Rasul Douglas was going to have to have a big game if they're going to have a chance to win this game. And here's one of them. He does a great job. They're in zone coverage. He's on the tight end, but he's got his eyes back to Prescott, and he has an understanding of how the defense, or excuse me, how the offense is trying to beat that coverage. They've got Amari Cooper then on a linebacker, and he comes off of his man and is able to make a play. And that's a that's a great job by Rasul Douglas, just understanding how the defense was being attacked. Amari Cooper, no catches. That was only his second target. Pass is caught a yard short of a first down by Alshon Jeffrey. Game of eight, third down and one coming up. We'll see what Philadelphia can do with that. Switch in momentum with the Dallas Cowboys already up three to nothing and getting that interception. The Eagles right at their goal line. and that play was going nowhere. Little option out there to his right with Adams. No toss and no yard. I don't like it. They're short side of the field. They're on the right hash and they're running the option play to the right side so they don't have much room as it is. They're playing against a Cowboys defense. There's no misdirection whatsoever and you're playing against the fast pursuing defense. Maybe the two fastest linebackers in the NFL and I don't know. I, I think uh, it's easy to say after the fact. I wouldn't have liked it if I'd known it was going to be called to begin with, and I just don't think uh, I don't think he gave a chance on that one. That ball hit the scoreboard. And a fair catch called by Beasley at the 20. That was the second straight three and out. Forced by this Cowboy defense. Frustration for Wentz. His Eagles down three bottom of that girder up there in the bottom of the scoreboard. Why? Cole Beasley pointed up after he made the fair catch. Here's Elliott with a run of nine on first down. Watch Cole Beasley after he made the catch. He had to adjust a little bit and then 
points up and says that ball glanced off the bottom of the scoreboard. Mike Pereira, what would the call be on something like that? Well, I, it could either be challenged or replay can stop that at any time during the game. And what you would do was do the play over again. You'd reset the clock to what it was when the ball was snapped and you'd have another fourth down play. Hey, kill, kill! Second down and one. Good pursuit by this Eagles defense and no gain for Ezekiel Elliott. Nigel Bradham, one of many who got through. Good play. He's got a broken left thumb and he's been playing with that. He doesn't take any plays off. Third down and one. Yeah, you talk about their linebacking situation. They're without their starter, Jordan Hicks, and then the other two, Grugier Hill and Bradham, are both playing with casts on their hands. And you, know, you think of someone having to wear a cast, and, and how would they then catch the ball if it's in their vicinity? But hard to get off blocks, hard to, hard to tackle. It's not easy to do, but both of these guys are having to do it, and they have been now for two weeks. Here's a toss to Elliott. First down, easy, and he's out of bounds near the 40. Dak Prescott is a threat to run. He's been running more during this streak, and he flipped it for 10 to Elliott. Yeah, they just came down and optioned off Chris Long, and as soon as he takes Prescott, nobody then accounting for Ezekiel Elliott around the edge. Elliott's on pace to have a bigger game in this one than he did in Philly. He's got 11 carries, 72 yards, six and a half yards a carry. 19 for 151 at Philadelphia. Second week in November. Here's a pass caught over the middle by Rod Smith. He gets nine, the backup to Elliott. Twin brothers defend their titles in a huge night of championship fights on Fox. Jamal Charlo takes on Willie Monroe Jr. while Jermel Charlo defends his belt against Tony Harrison. PBC, December 22nd, only on Fox. And the Fox Sports app. Second down and one. Smith stays in, spins for a first down and more. A lot of movement with the football as he braced for the hit from Corey Graham and a gain of 14. Well, they're trying to trap the inside defensive tackle. He comes up the field and was not a factor in the in the play whatsoever. They've been hitting it right over the center. The, this offensive front, well, L. Collins, he's done a nice job. Zach Martin making some key blocks as well. This this offensive line really off to a good start here in this first half. 53 to right. It's not a difference in total yards. And a flinch by Rod Smith will make it first and 15. False start. Offense, number 45. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. With that, we'll go to Kurt Menefee with a game break. All right, and with that, we'll go to the Raiders, having a 7-0 lead over Pittsburgh. That is until Stephen Ridley ran it in from three yards out. Oakland sent at the field goal. It's turned out to be a pretty good game so far. 10-7. Raiders on top in the second quarter. Joe, Troy, what, Eric? Yeah, Kurt. Pittsburgh's got a tough road the rest of the way. That's a game they have to win. They come in at 7-4-1. and one. Oakland's been playing a bit better of late. First down at 15. Elliott back in there. This one to Cooper. What a catch. That was all Cooper. Had to reach for the throw from Prescott, and it's good for 27. You can see how much space that they allow Amari Cooper. The safety is so deep, there's no way that he's going to be able to make a play on it. They let him into that zone, and it looked like it was going to be an overthrown ball, and Amari Cooper just goes and gets it. Eighth different receiver for Prescott, and he's found for a completion in this first half. We're already... And under four to go in the first half. Elliott, Fletcher Cox, and the flag comes in. Well, you look at this, Joe. The, the Eagles have only run 13 offensive snaps. You got the Cowboys who have 31 and holding offense number 73. Ten-yard penalty. Still first down. You've got an Eagle defender who's on the ground now. That's Josh Sweat. So he's down. The holding call 
against Joe Looney, the center, right there with the left arm. Back after this. And by PlayStation VR. Well, Josh Sweat is number 75. Hey, George Dorsey. Xavier Suafilo, that big body going to his left leg, so he's into the tent getting looked at. First and 20 for Dallas. Pass is caught, but a good play. Jarwin made the catch. The tackle was made out there on the edge by Rasul Douglas, who had the interception earlier. Good play because there was a lot of room in front of Jarwin. That brings up second and 18. There was room, and this has not been Russell Douglas's strength. You know, he go these guys go low because they're outmatched in size, and so many times they dive at these guys' feet and they don't make a play, but he's able to get them to the ground. Loaded. It's already six catches by Dallas tight ends. Here's one to Ezekiel Elliott brought down from behind by Brandon Graham. Third down coming up. So here are the Cowboys with more than four times as many yards as the Eagles, but leading only three to nothing. Just over two and a half minutes left in the half, and Philly gets the ball to start the second half. This is a big third and 13 coming up. Well, the Eagles offensively to have just two first downs. Now, this they got to make a stop here. If they just get out of this giving up three, they're down six at half. They'd be thrilled. The Cowboys are five of seven here on third down in the first half. Four-man rush. Prescott to his left. Flag is down, and Prescott is as well, short of the first down. The flag is back near the line of scrimmage. Holding offense number 77. Ten yard penalty replay third down. Well, and that's why Dak Prescott was able to, to get out of the pocket with nobody there. Tyron Smith, you see the hold that he has right here on Brandon Graham, and so Graham's not able to come off of that. Clearly, Prescott has not been much of a, of a running threat, really, in the last seven, eight weeks after they beat Jacksonville. But he has come up with some timely first down scrambling like he did on Thursday night against the Saints. We're at the two-minute warning in Arlington. Third and long for Dallas when we come back. It's third down and 23 for Dallas. Back at their own 28. <laughs> Gallup, Tyron Smith trying to get out there and can't make a block. And there is Rasul Douglas, who's been the player of the half for the Philadelphia Eagles. He really has, and he comes up here, and this is a this is really a nice job. He squares him up and and makes a good play on it. And so it made what looked like it was going to be a pretty easy field goal attempt. With him coming up, making the stop where he did, we'll see what happens. But yeah, if the Eagles are able to keep this at six points in this first half, like you said, as bad as they have played on the offensive side of the ball, they got to be thrilled. They did not want to play from behind. That's what happened the last time these two teams played. The Cowboys had a 13-3 lead at halftime in that one. But this is a Eagles team who's had success here in Dallas. They've won five of the last six here in Dallas. 45-yard try. Maher, his first year in the NFL, is no good. Wide to the right. And Maher now 11 of 15 in that range of 40-plus. Rasul Douglas, what a half. 3-0 Dallas. Plays on offense. Dallas 13 first downs, but who cares? A missed field goal by Maher. Here's Philadelphia. They'll get the ball to start the second half. They're down three to nothing. One timeout left. They took one on defense on the third down stop. Aguilar wrapped up by Jalen Smith. A gain of seven. You know, the Cowboys with their three timeouts, they are going to see what's happening here. It's a timeout. Looked like Jason Kelsey. The official called the timeout. And it's Cleet Blakeman. 
who was signaling oh, to the yeah. sideline that he saw Kelsey take a hit to the head. And he has to get looked at. There's no decision on the part of Kelsey as they stop the clock with a minute 34 left. And he is the anchor, the beloved center of these Eagles, Jason Kelsey. Mike Pereira, that was called by Cleet Blakeman. Well, if you call an injury timeout with the clock running, which it was, then it would convert to So he actually then loses his last time out if that's what he said we couldn't hear him if it was called from upstairs from the athletic trainer certified then there's not a charge timeout no, I, you're right that was Blakeman who called it so it is the third and final timeout for Philadelphia and Stefan Wisniewski who started the first four games of the year at left guard replaced by Sam Alu takes over for Kelsey. Another Philly injury. Pass is caught. Ertz out of bounds at the 49 of Dallas with a minute 28 left and a completion of nine yards. Well, it's a great job of protection up front. Carson Wentz had all day to sit there and wait for Ertz to come out of that break. And like I said, I'm sure Jason Garrett was standing over there wanting to see what happened on second down. If they came up short, you know, he could reverse the things and call timeout and get the ball back and maybe come away with something themselves. But the Eagles able to convert, and now they can start to think about getting into field goal range and making something happen beyond that. Wentz protected again, and the pass caught by Ertz. Back to back, three on the day. That's 96 on the year. Hey, and Zach Ertz is looking right back into the sun on this play as he comes out of it, and he's able to still go up and make a play on that. That's a that's a really nice job. He's he's the reason he's gotten open the way that he has throughout the year and over his career. He's outstanding at running routes. Ertz now over 1,000 yards. Receiving ball is out. Live ball. Cowboys have it. Knocked out by Crawford. Collins has it for Dallas. As Tyrone Crawford just forced the ninth fumble of the year by Carson Wentz. And his sixth lost fumble. And all the momentum gone for Philly. Now Dallas with an opportunity. Fumbling issues. Prescott has fumbled 11 times. And now for Wentz, nine. It's a turnover and nearly another as Cole Beasley is overthrown. Corey Graham came up short on the interception try. Back to the turnover. Yeah, Tyrone Crawford, he's there at defensive tackle and he gets a good push. He gets stumbled and then he comes up and is able to just go for the ball as Wentz is, is trying to throw it. He, you know, he had great protection on the previous plays, and you start to get a false sense of protection back there as a quarterback. I'm surprised he didn't feel that a little bit more, but a great takeaway. The Cowboys haven't had a lot of those this year, but they have during this win streak. Here's Elliott over the middle. Well played. That was Malcolm Jenkins. And it'll be third down coming up. Dallas with all three of their timeouts left, and right now willing to let the clock run to see what they do on third down. Third and seven. Chris Long with a good start. Here's Elliott. Now they'll use a timeout as Elliott takes it inside the Philly 45. 20 seconds left in the half. Let's find out from Kurt what's coming up at the half. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll look at that unbelievable ending in the Dolphins-Patriots game. The Chiefs and Ravens go into overtime, and we'll get you caught up on the Bengals against the Chargers, plus the Broncos and Niners. Strike a pose. The Visa Halftime is next. Cowboys are now six for nine on third down. Thanks, Kurt. We look forward to that. A lot of interesting scores and a crazy end to that Dolphins-Patriots game. They flipped it on the final play and a win for Miami. That's Cooper at the bottom. Prescott throws for Hearns. He's got it. And timeout taken again by Dallas with 14 seconds left. Now one timeout remaining. 
A gain of nine, and that's the ninth different receiver Dak Prescott has found in this half. Fletcher Cox on that previous play was shaken up. He limped over to the sideline, and now he's coming back. In case you're wondering, Brent Maher, who just missed from 45, is long this year, is 55 yards, and they are inside that range right now. 14 seconds facing second and one. Prescott throws high for Elliott. Third down and one. Well, they do have the one timeout, so they can use the entire field. They can make things a little bit easier, certainly for Maher. Confidence got to be a little bit shaken. And we saw Alan Hearns catch that one ball, and he's kind of been the forgotten guy. He was the one coming into this season that was supposed to be the one who picked up the production that was being lost with Des Bryant leaving. It was just his second reception here in the last three plus games. And 18th of the year. Third down and one, four man rush. Prescott throws, Jarwin with the catch, and a flag is down near the spot where Prescott threw it. Holding offense, wow. number 77, 10 yard penalty, replay third down. That's the second against Tyron Smith, and that's gonna push the ball out of field goal range. Well, it's Brandon Graham once again. Brandon Graham has always been a guy who I've thought a lot of. He's an outstanding player, and he came into the season a little banged up, but you see the look on Jason Garrett's face. He can't believe it. You know that there they are they're in perfect position Mark Colombo who took over for Paul Alexander about four or five weeks ago as the offensive line coach he's not too happy either so now they're in a real bind well it would be a 62 yard try from this spot if they don't get another yard there are only four seconds left what do they do try for a quick one and it's dropped the throw behind Gallup Jason Garrett is going to send Maher out there to try for a 62-yarder. They tried for a quick one, hoping to get a catch and a timeout to take a chunk of yardage off this, but... Well, regardless of whether he makes this or not, the, the Eagles, it, I mean, neither offense has, has looked great. Even when you say that, the Cowboys have 230 yards of offense, but they just shot themselves in the foot. The Eagles just simply haven't done anything. Here's the try. It is good! Maher from 62! And so much for the holding call against Tyron Smith, knocking them out of field goal range, and he made it by a pretty good margin. You know, what's interesting, Joe, is had Dak Prescott have made a better throw on third down, they likely don't get any points. The first half would have ended, they would have been tackled, and by Prescott being inaccurate with the pass, it gave Maher a chance for a 62-yard field goal, and he drilled it. The play of the first half presented by DirecTV. More for your thing. That's our thing. That was today's Game Flow brought to you by Progressive. And the Game Flow through 30 minutes on the clock produced six points the last three coming on the second longest field goal in the NFL this season by the guy who's about to boot it here 62 yards as time expired the Cowboy franchise record the longest 63 by Graham Gano to beat the Giants for the Panthers my how the Panthers fortunes have changed they lost again today well, what's got to change here in this second half for the Philadelphia Eagles? They've not been able to maintain possession very long. They haven't run a lot of offensive plays. 
In fact, just 17. And then that turnover right at the end of the first half was a killer with Philly down by just three as they start the second half of the football. Jason Kelsey is back in there for Philadelphia. Good to see. Good throw. Ertz spun to the ground by Heath. Aaron Andrews, what'd you get at the half? Doug Peterson telling me we've got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. He just blamed really that first half with his offense on mental errors, the penalties, the lack of execution. You mentioned Jason Kelsey, the center back out there. Corey Clement running back. He is done for the day, guys. And that was a nasty knee injury we saw on the part of Clement. Here's a handoff to Adams. He's been shut down since that opening possession as Antoine Woods makes the play. If you look at the first half stats, lopsided to say the least but just a one score game well Josh Adams had three carries for 30 yards on that opening possession for the Eagles and after that they rushed for minus two yards total so this defensive front for the Cowboys they've dominated the line of scrimmage the Eagles have not been able to convert on third down so that they can run some plays they have Sproles back there who they like in the screen game he's blocking Throw to the right, and it's incomplete for Ertz. Three and out to start this second half, and Wentz gets up grabbing his neck, and this offense is misfiring left and right. Well, Tyrone Crawford, he comes up the middle, and then you've got Jalen Smith, and then, of course, off the edge, Demarcus Lawrence, and a lot of pressure on the quarterback, even when there's not sacks. And this is a defense that... They make you earn every single thing you get. Every throw is contested. There's no easy plays, and you watch them on film, and it's it's week after week that this is occurring. They just shut them down here today. Line drive, punt, some room in front of Beasley. Not a good punt. Good return out across the 45. The Eagles have had five possessions. They've had three three and outs, and Wentz has been taking some shots. That structure it's known as AT&T Stadium there have been six points put on the board this drive starts at the Dallas 46 last week their season series over Philadelphia Elliott we've got a yard and a half hard to believe the visiting team has won 13 of the last 17 games in this series between the Cowboys and the Eagles and it goes back to 2010 and there are the first half possessions with the half ending in that 62 yarder and you see the number of plays that have been run putting together some good drives just not coming away with much Prescott throws Cooper barely been involved and he makes a spin a move and gets a first down on Craven LeBlanc yeah, of course, this drive for the Cowboys starting with great field position and see what ultimately happens. But, I, you know, hey, Jim Schwartz in this defense, I don't know what more they can do. I mean, they're holding on by a thread. And, I mean, literally, with all the injuries that they have had, they just have not had any help whatsoever. And you just kind of get the feeling that if the Cowboys get something going and are able to come away with a touchdown, that they're going to have a real tough time trying to climb back in. Elliott on first down carries for five. Nigel Bradham and Devontae Bosby combined for the tackle. I said it early 13 different defensive backs have started a game for the Eagles this year. That is unheard of. And here in this one, they lost Sidney Jones early as he re aggravated that hamstring. So Bosby who was in a camp battle with Avante Maddox for that slot defender role is in there. Pass is caught by Gallup against Devontae Bosby for a first down. Michael Gallup has had a really nice rookie season and 
He's gotten better and better as the year has gone along. He's become kind of their deep threat. We saw him early in this game where he had some opportunities underneath because of his speed being able to threaten defenders. But he's been a nice complement to what they're doing with Amari Cooper on the other side. Play action wide open over the middle. Jarwin, his coming out party in this game. Rujay Hill on the tackle, but a catch and run of 22. Well, you see the play action and what happens to these linebackers, and then Jarwin's just able to get right in behind it in that zone coverage. And, you know, you come in and you play the Eagles, yeah, they've given up yards on the ground, but because of all the injuries they've had in the secondary, you can exploit them there. The Cowboys starting to do that a little bit more here on this drive. off the left hand of Beasley and it falls to the turf incomplete Von LeBlanc involved again for Philadelphia good effort by Cole Beasley at second goal well that would have been a, a rare thing for Cole Beasley touchdown receptions have been hard to come by coming into the game he's only had three games in the last 33 games with the touchdown reception they haven't been able to feed him much down in this part of the field. That defense for Philly's been out there a lot. This will be the 47th offensive snap for Dallas compared to 20 for Philadelphia. Elliott. He said it in the first half, and here they are again with a third and goal. Red zone trouble. When Elliott and Prescott were rookies in the red zone, this Dallas team was third. And converting opportunities inside the 20 into touchdowns. Sixth last year, 26th in 2018. And like I said, the Eagles defensively have been really good down here. I think that's Jim Schwartz's thing is just saying, hey, we're going to give up yards. We just got to tighten up and try to minimize the damage once they get inside the 20. Big third down right now for this Eagles team. Prescott keeps, doesn't get it. Well played. Down to the two where it's fourth down, and Jason Garrett is going to send his field goal unit on to make it a two-score game. Well, anytime you see Prescott back there, you have to know that, that he's capable of keeping the ball on a quarterback keeper, whether it's on the edge or the quarterback draw. They like that. It's a safe play, of course. And he's such a big physical player that he's able to break tackles and potentially get it in. But... It's a great job, but here with the Cowboys, an opportunity to make it a two-possession game. 21-yard try is not through. It's been a lot of yards, and then Maher on the other end. When the Cowboys have put up points, they lead 9 to nothing. under 9 to go third quarter. The game, Brett Maher recorded all nine points with three field goals he's missed once in NFL history the NFL record is 64 yards for a field goal and Raider in Denver at altitude against Tennessee in 2013 there have been five 63 yarders one this year and now three 62 yarders as Maher joins that list let's give you a look at the NFC East who wants to win it Redskins got off to a 5-2 and two start, but they've lost four of their last five. The Cowboys, a 3-5 and five start. They've won four in a row. Washington gets caught by the Dallas Cowboys. We no longer have a budget to eat together as a group <laughs> before a game. The Eagles got off to that 3-4 and four start. One, two straight, three of five. And the Giants, they took apart Washington today. And they've been hot. Three of their last four is Wentz hands to Adams. He gets a yard. It's been a frustrating day, Troy, for Alshon Jeffrey. He came in being targeted only five times a game over the last five games. And you get the sense they didn't even look in his direction. Well, you get the feeling he knows that, too. You know, based on, on his body language, Ertz is getting all of the, all of the targets. And that's been consistent throughout this season, but 
right now this 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 defensive front is dominating the line of scrimmage and they can't get any movement at all Wentz throws pass caught and there he is right on cue a first down and just his second catch of the game in a game they need as he's working against Byron Jones. Well, I do I do think Alshon Jeffrey with, with the Cowboys style, they, they like to come up and press these wide receivers, play physical, and that fits into the type of receiver that he is. I mean, he's, he's a guy who can use his body and, and gives you a, a pretty good-sized target to Wentz and just get it close to him and let him see if he can make a play. He is now in the slot. Over the middle, pass caught by Ertz. Peyton Vander Esch is there for Dallas. A gain of seven, as I said, over 1,000 yards receiving for Zach Ertz. And now he is two catches shy of 100 on the year. The NFL record belongs to Jason Witten for catches by a tight end in a season 110. Back in 2012, he's on a pace to break that easily. Let's come off the edge. They throw in that direction, and Aguilar can't make the catch on a bad throw by Carson Wentz. He got blocking out in front of him, too. And like I said, you watch Carson Wentz, and he just misses way too many easy throws for a guy who's as good as he is. And he would just get it where he can make a play and run with it. The Eagles. Sorry, Joe. They got a, they got a big third down here now, and we'll see what Doug Peterson is going to call. But this is at least a manageable third down. So many times tonight, they've been third and long. Third down and three. Pass is broken up. Jeffrey, the target. Coverage by Aluzier. Good tight coverage. Pretty good throw by Wentz. Uh, it's a great job of coverage by Awuzier. And uh, these two guys, I'll tell you, this secondary has been so good. They don't give up big plays. Like I said, they challenge these receivers. Chris Richard has come in and really done an outstanding job. And of course, he was with the Seattle Seahawks, the Legion of Boom. I, I think this secondary, they need to come up with a name of their own as good as they've been this year. Johnston hits the end over end punt. A fair catch by Cole Beasley. And more frustration for Alshon Jeffrey and Carson Wentz. 9 0 Dallas. Under seven to go. Quarter number three. Dallas gets it back. Defensive battle. Each side has one takeaway. And this drive starts at the Cowboy 14. Looking left all the way, and down goes Prescott. There's Fletcher Cox. And a big play by what has to be a worn-out Philadelphia defense. That's a great job by Fletcher Cox. It's Zach Martin, the all-pro right guard, that he's able to drive back and then come off of that, and you don't see that very often from Zach Martin. He has been dealing with a knee injury, but that was several weeks ago, and he's gotten healthier. But that's the impact that Fletcher Cox can have, and that's what's going to be needed by this front, as I talked about. They, they have to be the ones to try to win this thing for this Eagles team. Prescott protected, throws high, and he's picked. Intercepted. Corey Graham with the return. Out of bounds inside the five. Had a receiver wide open. Michael Gallup and Dak Prescott threw it over his head for the interception first of the year by Corey Graham. Yeah, Corey Graham right here, and what a job he does, but he's just playing deep, and he just has to catch the ball because there, there's a wide open Amari, or excuse me, it's Gallup, who was running the 18-yard square in, and he's wide open, and you just got to lay that. All you got to do is beat the linebacker with the ball. That's a lot of space and a lot of margin for error for a quarterback, and he just sails it. And Graham sitting back there, and Christmas came early for him. And for the Eagles, right back in it. Wisniewski back in there now for Philadelphia at center. 
Jeffrey in motion, throw to him. Pass is caught for the touchdown. And in a blink, back to a one-score game. The rare points off turnover for this Philadelphia team. Tyrone Crawford is in there trying to break up the celebration. Yeah, they're not too happy about this celebration. They're not too happy about giving up points. They've played so well. Hey, this is all Alshon Jeffrey after the catch. There were a couple Cowboys defensive backs right there to make a play on him. They don't, they don't block it very well. And he just is able to, to split the two of them being down in there that close to the goal line. It's a good job by him finishing and getting through Byron Jones and Xavier Woods. They came in, the Eagles did, with only 20 points all year. Here's an extra point that is no good, and it's a three-point game. This one started with the interception by Corey Graham. Then the touchdown to Alshon Jeffrey, his fifth of the year, but a missed extra point. The first of the year by Jake Elliott keeps this a three-point game. Came into the game with only nine takeaways, tied for 30th in the league, and only 20 points all season off takeaways, also tied for 30th. They had two takeaways in this game and just got six points, not seven, because of the missed extra point. And this one is starting to heat up during the week. Camus Cruje Hill talked about how the Cowboys always choke, and we're going to go down there and make them choke. The Antoine Woods doing that, going back to the sideline a moment ago, and there's the quote. Looked like he had an early fumble recovery, not to be, on a review. But he and that defense, they played well when it's mattered the most. Here's Elliott trying to get to the edge. Throws a stiff arm into Sidney Jones. And Sidney Jones, who was out in the first half with a hamstring injury, is back in there for Philadelphia. A gain of three. You, know, you see that group celebration, and, and some of these have gotten so ridiculous that you know that's what you worry about that you're in a heated game like that and you know temper flare and you know, that situation could have evolved into something a lot worse i'm glad that it didn't but I think that's that's what the league's got to concern themselves a little bit with some of it's been a lot of fun but you never know how far it's going to be taken here's a toss to elliot tyron smith in front of him wow what a hit and somehow Elliott got through it. That was Bradham, I believe, that came up and smacked Elliott right here. And somehow Elliott spun away from it and turned it into a five-yard game. Well, hey, if you watch Ezekiel Elliott run, he's, he does not go down. I don't, you know, even as good of a hit as that was, if you don't wrap him up, He's not going to the ground. I mean, this guy, he's got great speed, as we know. But he is really, really powerful and hard to get to the ground one-on-one. -on -one. That would have been a nice play by Bradham had he made it. Prescott throws. Pass is caught by Beasley for the first down. Game three. This January on Fox comes a thrilling new series from executive producer Ridley Scott, starring Mark Paul Gosselar. Can one girl... Save Humanity, based on the best-selling trilogy, The Passage, premieres this January on Fox. I think Jim Schwartz is doing a good job of rotating this defensive front. As soon as uh, Cole Beasley caught that for the first down, they immediately brought Fletcher Cox and Chris Long off. They bring in the other reinforcements, try to keep him fresh. Right into this fourth quarter. And facing this guy in a gain of one. There's Bradham again, and Sidney Jones as well. Under five to go. Dak Prescott, the last time the Cowboys had the ball, threw the interception to Corey Graham. Prescott came into this game with a nice streak. No interceptions and got it up to 165 attempts without a pick. And he's thrown two over his last 17 throws. 
Second and nine. Pass is caught. Wide open. Amari Cooper spins his way into Eagle territory to the 46. Pretty soft coverage. They're just trying to keep from giving up the big play. So Rasul Douglas was anticipating the slant route. And then when he doesn't get that, you see how much separation he had with Amari Cooper and pretty easy catch. You and I don't do a ton of Raiders games. And Amari Cooper was a two-time Pro Bowler, had 1,000 yards in his first couple of seasons in the NFL. See Jordan Lewis in motion. That's him. Defensive back. Prescott running for his life and throws it into the ground. And just to finish the point on Amari Cooper, now that you and I have seen him more, I'm anxious to hear your take on Cooper. When the deal was made for a first-round pick next year, I think a lot of people thought, well, they paid too much. But Cooper has shown a lot here in a handful of games for Dallas. Well, he has, and, and they probably did give up too much. They probably gave up, uh, you know, I mean, you would like to be able to get him for a second round pick or you know is that what it took was anybody else offering it depends on who you talk to but he definitely has helped this team and he's awfully good running routes one of the best I've ever seen is a route runner here's a nice play by Graham as he brings down Elliott again of two and I think the big thing you know yeah he had the big day on Thanksgiving against the Washington Redskins I, I, I really do believe that he, he he's given the quarterback Dak Prescott a lot of confidence knowing one-on-one -on -one that he's a guy that can win and that's invaluable for a quarterback when you have that you have to have that you have to have guys you know can beat coverage he gives them that kind of confidence and and the defenses haven't changed the way they're playing this offense they're still trying to stop Ezekiel Elliott but, but now they, they've got some answers. And he's given this team a psychological boost. Third and eight. Pressure on Prescott. Ball comes out. Picked up by Philadelphia. That is the third takeaway for this Eagles defense. As Michael Bennett knocked it out. And Brandon Graham came away with it. Well, Michael Bennett comes around. You're going to see the ball drop by Dak Prescott when you go to move up in the pocket you, you've got to secure the football with both hands and you can't get reckless with it especially you see you got one hand on the ball and and this has been a problem it's been a problem for Carson Wentz it has been again tonight and this has been a reoccurring issue for Dak Prescott in this offense we talked about Joe the, the struggles of Philadelphia offensively even though it was just a nine-point game these are the plays that this Eagles defense was going to have to make in order to help out an offense that's had a hard time. Barely came in with just three takeaways over the previous six games. They've got three takeaways for a season high in this battle against the Dallas Cowboys. Here's Goddard. And the rookie will take it to the Dallas 49. Here's that play by Bennett who knocked it out. Well, Michael Bennett's been doing this a long time. And this defensive front, when you look at them, like I said, they're the group that's going to have to win it for them. As beat up as they have been across the board, it's been Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and Chris Long and Michael Bennett are the four guys that they've been able to rely on week in and week out. And they're some of their best players. And they're making a difference in this game now. Second down and four. Pass is behind Alshon Jeffrey. Incomplete. And then Jeffrey got hit right in the ribs. And at the very least, that knocked the wind out of him on that hit by Xavier Woods. Well, just a tough catch knowing Xavier Woods is coming in and a, another poor throw. You're going to see Demarcus Lawrence has to go into coverage, and you've got Sproles in the flat, and Carson Wentz was just locked in on trying to squeeze that ball into Jeffrey. If he's able to get it to the outside for Sproles, I mean, there's no telling how far he's going to go. Timeout by Wentz. With the play clock at two, the Eagles have only 98 yards of offense. But they have the ball, third and four, trail by three, and we'll be right back after this from Verizon.
Hey guys, get something for Nana. Brian. Thomas. Yeah. Hey. Hey, uh, quick question. Do you like paying for things that you don't need? No. And do you want to get things you love for free? Who wouldn't? Exactly. Right. That's why Verizon decided that everyone in the family should get the unlimited they want without paying for things they don't. And why it now comes with six months free Apple Music. Dad, oh. Apple Music. He gets it. This guy gets it. This holiday, get the gift you want. The music you love on the network you deserve. Switch now and get $300 off our best phones. Well, a big third down here for Philadelphia. They converted their first third down try. They're 0 for 5 since. Well, the other guy they haven't been able to get involved today is Golden Tate. Wentz brought down short of first down yardage by Lawrence. A gain of one, it's fourth down, and we'll see if Doug Peterson will go for it. Looks like he will. Well, I don't like this decision by, by Doug Peterson. I mean, the defense is, is hanging on, as I said, but the, the offense hasn't done enough, in my opinion, to suggest that they can pick this up. Eight for 16 on fourth down this year. Fourth and three. Just got it away. Wentz throws, passes, caught by Sproles. And the conversion on fourth down inside the 25. Well, they got Alshon Jeffrey, who is going to help pick Vander Esch, who's in coverage man to man on Sproles. And that action right there was just enough. And it allowed Sproles to get some separation, and Wentz is able to put it on him. 24 yards on fourth and three. Back after this as we go to the fourth from your local Fox station. I'm Steve Horn with me. David Moulton, who is to the right of Troy Aikman. Andrew Root, who's with Mike Pereira. First down for Philadelphia. Play action. Pass is off the hands of Zach Ertz. Had a chance, he had inside leverage, but you look at what Darren Sproles was able to do there on fourth down. Jason Garrett was wanting to, to get a penalty on, on Philadelphia for a pick. They, they're never going to get that call based on the way it unfolded, but Sproles, who I talked about earlier, did not have a reception last Monday night against the Redskins. That was just his second, but clearly the biggest one of the game. Sproles at the top of the screen. Just got it away. Lance throws. There's Tate. And Golden Tate, but a flag is down. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Number 94. 14-yard penalty. Correction. Half the distance to the goal line. First down, Philadelphia. The call is against Randy Gregory for this with the ball out. That hit into the middle of the chest. Well, I, I think the call is that it was a little late, but I, I, I think that's a bad call. I said chest, obviously, into the back. What do you think, Mike Pereira? It's the two-step rule. So you get two steps, and if you hit them on your second step, then that is a foul, and that's what was called, and that's what it is. That was a good call, and I just don't like the call. <laughs> First and goal. Sproles delayed handoff. Flag is thrown. Sproles is down near the three. That was a good cut by Sproles. He cut off of Jason Kelsey. I'm just wondering if Kelsey is maybe the guy they're going to get for, for a hold on the play. Kelsey's been in and out of there since getting hit to the head earlier. Illegal block in the back. Offense. Number 86, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Instead, they get tight end Zach Ertz for this on Vanderesh. The 
because of the missed extra point. Hey, we gotta go. we gotta go. After the interception and the touchdown to Jeffrey, this is a three-point game. Play clock is reset. And it's first and goal from the 17. Smallwood started in the backfield. The pass is caught by Matthews. He's to the 11. And this Eagles team, after leading the NFL last year in red zone touchdown percentage, they're number 19 this year. And they need one here to take the lead. Well, interestingly enough, on that first down, they didn't have Zach Ertz, Golden Tate, or Darren Sproles on the field. So that that's if you're the Cowboys, you're looking at that and you're saying. Hey, this is this is good for us. You know, they're they're real receiving threats, but they're back out there now with Golden Tate and Ertz. Hand off, Smallwood. Third down and goal. Jalen Smith. Not alone, making the tackle a game of three. Well, they almost didn't get that play off. The play clock was winding down, and, and, and Wentz sees that the Cowboys are playing coverage. They had two safeties deep. The numbers were advantageous to run the football. They got a little bit out of it, but here they are now with third and goal. Sproles back in there. Ertz will be out wide to the left. Defending yeah. for Dallas, the number three red zone defense gets a stop. You see Anthony Brown, he, he, he's waiting for it. If Anthony Brown had turned around, this is a pick six. And I don't, uh, Wentz is expecting him to continue to run. Ertz, usually the receiver is not allowed to stop. They're fortunate that that's all it is, is incomplete. 26-yard try in this game because of the previous missed extra point is now tied. More points off the turnover. Three takeaways by Philly's defense. In this LinkedIn, the game is tied 9-9. There have been six missed extra points across the NFL today. Here in week 14, and the sixth of the day is the one first of the year by Elliott. And the field goal followed, and now a 9-9 game. All the points for Philadelphia off the turnovers into the end zone, out to the 25. Before the game, as part of the NFL's Walter Payton Man of the Year Award program, Dak Prescott surprised Zane Dunn and Kendrell Daniels, each with two Super Bowl tickets. Zane is seven, and in the second grade from Marshall, Texas, Zane and Dak connected over that they had both lost their mothers. And Kendrell Daniels is from Preston, Mississippi, 19-year-old artist and Dak's good friend. Kendrell was born with no arms and has painted artwork for Dak and was the artist for this year's My Cause, My Fleet. Here's a handoff to Elliott, and this Eagles defense that struggled in the first half early Against the run and against Ezekiel Elliott has clamped things down. Camus Grugier Hill made the stop a loss of one. Yeah, they really have because he was averaging over six yards a carry here just a little while ago, and this is Ezekiel Elliott time. You know, here you are in the fourth quarter. I certainly am familiar with that with Emmett Smith, and you want to start running some time off the clock and put together a drive and put a team away. This is what you want to do, but this Eagles defense is not going away. Here's Elliott makes the catch and a good tackle effort and not bringing down Elliott and a flag at the end of the play. It was Sidney Jones who had him on the sideline. Somehow Elliott stayed up and at the end of the play, after a gain of 14, they threw a flag. How did Sidney Jones 
miss on that and then there's Elliott maintaining his balance will get the call it shows you the power that Ezekiel Elliott has you know Sidney Jones came in and, and hit him tried wrapping him up just unable to do it and now Elliott goes to get looked at and the officials still congregate yeah, I'm wondering if this is some kind of helmet the the helmet rule at the end of this play and that and that, to me, looks, you know, it's, it's who initiate clearly is a helmet roll. It's who are they going to call it on if, in fact, they stick with it. Personal foul, lowering the helmet, initiating contact, offense, number 21. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay second down. You know, that, they, they do look to who initiates it. And, and I thought looking at it that, yeah, that's Ezekiel Elliott who initiates it. Corey Graham comes in. He, he doesn't even, it looked initially like he does come in with his helmet, but it actually was his shoulder pad. We haven't had that called much. Jason Garrett obviously doesn't like it, but Roger Goodell and the NFL wanted it. The competition committee wanted it. They got it. There you have it. They lose the first down. It's second down. And here's Cooper who will just go down and pick up the first down it looked like and the flag is down again. And now there are two flags down. Flags I think the first flag it looked like there was contact by by Sidney Jones. Where the first flag came in I, I'm not sure what the Pass second interference one. defense number 22 penalties declined. Yardage gained is enough for a first down. It's against Sidney Jones. Yeah, this is maybe Amari Cooper's best route. The not tonight, but when you look at his route tree on the things that he does so well, he's awfully good with the slant routes. Now Zach Martin. Wow. The All-Pro guard, four-time Pro Bowler, is that Connor Williams takes over at right guard. Suafilo stays at left guard. <laughs> First down for Dallas in the tie game. And off to Rod Smith. Big hole. There's a lot to get through here. First, this is the injury to Zach Martin, number 70, on that previous play. We've seen this a couple times. Fletcher Cox just drives him back, and right there is when he, he has that injured left knee that he had a few weeks back, and he goes to the ground. Now, Ezekiel Elliott after that hit he went into the tent now, Connor Williams the rookie he had been the starter and left guard he's now on the right side they cross train these guys that's a little different for him Prescott throws passes caught Smith first down up near midfield meanwhile that call against Ezekiel Elliott that was that new helmet rule that was so talked about in the preseason and called all preseason but into last week, there had been only nine of those calls across the entire league. They called three last week. We've done a couple of games where they've missed that call, so it figured to be a point of emphasis, and they call one against Elliott. And they check him over on the sideline as Rod Smith takes over. He's the only other tailback on the roster for Dallas. First down. And he gets it. Doing a nice job too, running with the football. You're without Ezekiel Elliott, and your best lineman Zach Martin is out. And yet, Rod Smith, he's picking up good yardage on the ground. Connor Williams had arthroscopic knee surgery, hurt against Tennessee. That's when they went to Suafilo at left guard, and Suafilo stayed there during this four-game winning streak. Connor Williams back into the action. Second and five, quick throw, pass caught for the first down, Amari Cooper. Sidney Jones across from him, a gain of 13. Well, Sidney Jones is even inside leverage. So he's he, he aligns inside to try to take that away. But when you run a, as good a route as Amari Cooper does, then you're still able to beat it on the slant Fletcher Cox he's working over Connor Williams but Amari Cooper could probably run that until the end of this game they won't cover it. here's Elliott back in the game on first down the ball popped out but he was down a gain of five and it's a two to one advantage in time of possession in this game in favor of Dallas and yet 
I'll echo what you've said really throughout. The job done by Jim Schwartz in this defense, it's been some effort. They have three of their original four starting defensive backs on IR. Their patchwork. They rotate guys up front trying to stay fresh, and they have kept Philadelphia in the game. Second down and five. Prescott goes to the end zone. Pass is caught. Cooper, touchdown. complicated about what they did it's one on one outside Amari Cooper's just going to come off the ball and then just outrun Sidney Jones there's no double move just a straight nine route and it's a perfectly thrown ball by Dak Prescott in the fourth quarter of a game where Prescott has struggled he dropped in a beauty for 28 yards and the lead is seven First Cowboy touchdown of the day. Prescott, Cooper, 16 to 9. Dallas Cowboy lead, and Dak Prescott went 5 for 5 for 74 yards and the 28 yard touchdown to Amari uh, Cooper. For the first Cowboy touchdown of the day and a seven point lead, and we'll see if Philadelphia can answer. their 25. We'll welcome you back inside the broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck with the Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. Aaron Andrews is down on the field and now we'll see what Carson Wentz can do and this has not been a pretty game really until a moment ago for either quarterback in this game. Yeah no both have struggled. Carson right now with you know just under eight minutes to go if you're the Eagles you got to figure that this is your last shot. I mean you don't know if you're going to get the ball again if you don't do something with it right here and Carson Wentz is going to have to be as good as he's been the entire game he's just been a little bit off some of that of course is a lot of that has had to do with this defense for the Cowboys and the pressure that they put on him but when he has chances here going forward he's got to connect on every one of them here's a handoff to Adams and he swallowed up with a one yard loss well it's going to be a big one on Fox on Thursday night and our final one of the year on the network is Philip Rivers and the red hot L.A. Chargers face off against Patrick Mahomes and the division leading Kansas City Chiefs. It's a big AFC West showdown. It's a big NFL showdown. 730. It starts Eastern on Fox NFL Network and streaming on Prime Video. Sproles in the backfield on second and 11. Wentz pass caught by Jeffrey. And the play is made by Xavier Woods. A gain of six, so another third down coming up for Carson Wentz. They are one for seven on this down in this game. Surprised to see Dallas come after him here. They bring Smith on the blitz. Pass broken up. Anthony Brown made the play in front of Golden Tate. Three and out. Well, the Eagles got what they wanted, and they got one on one with Golden Tate and Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown just lays out and, and makes a great play on this ball. I mean, Tate looked like he had slowed down a little bit. Maybe the throw was pulling him up, but there was separation off of the break, and it was closed in a hurry by a combination of things. But Brown makes a nice play. That's the fourth three and out of the game for Philadelphia. The team that came in leading the league in time of possession. 
after that play Zach Ertz came off complaining that he didn't get a call like he slid down working against Byron Jones not much there yeah I didn't I didn't think so either and you know the Cowboys you got to believe that this defense is as good as they've been that there's nothing they want more than the game to come down to them and them having to make a stop and for the Eagles not to even be able to pick up a first down it's kind of been the story of their day last seven Cowboy possessions Prescott has turned the ball over three times Elliott met in the backfield by Bennett and just thrown to the turf but a flag on that tackle did he get him up high I didn't, I didn't think there was much there. Illegal shift. Offense. There were two players moving and it didn't get set prior to the snap. That penalty's declined. Result of play is second down. So no flag. Great tackle and good play by Bennett. Great play by Bennett. And he's made a lot of great plays over his career. He was kind of a part-time player when they had Derek Barnett, their first-round pick out of Tennessee last year. And he's had to play a lot more than they probably anticipated coming in. But what a great player he, he is. His, his younger brother, Martellus, was drafted by the Cowboys as a tight end several years ago. Prescott protected. Pass is incomplete. Cooper and Sidney Jones were jousting for position and a shove at the end of this this one just ricochets right off the chest of Amari Cooper well the way that Sidney Jones is playing this you would think that he had a safety helping him over the top he did not and he was playing very physical and aggressive on Amari Cooper had Amari Cooper ran another go route <laughs> it would have been another touchdown. This is a great job right now by the Eagles if they're able to make a stop. Defense has been on the field a ton. And can they rally one more time? Third down and 14. Aired out. Downfield and incomplete for Michael Gallup. He had the coverage beaten. That was Sidney Jones back there. And they are trying to find number 22 every time. Yeah, he's a target for sure in this. Should have been six. You know, and Dak Prescott knows that he he's missed. He's missed a few of these. He missed Michael Gallup on a big play last week on the same similar situation. And I'll tell you what, the Eagles defense, they answered the bell, and now we'll see what this offense, if anything, what they might be able to do. This for Chris Jones, his first punt since the first possession of the game. Here's Sproles. He's got seven punt returns for a touchdown. And he's out of room, but good starting field position inside Dallas territory as Damian Wilson made the stop in a 10-yard return. How about a recap? How about a fresco? Here's an interception by Rasul Douglas. One of three turnovers in this game by Dallas. And the Eagles turn that interception by Graham into six points, not seven, with a missed extra point. But then the 28-yarder, the previous time Dallas had the ball from Prescott to Cooper, the Cowboys' first touchdown, and they go three and out. And the second best starting field position for the Eagles all game. Lance throws, pass caught, Jeffrey, first down. At the Dallas 35, a gain of 12, a woozy a defending. You watch Wentz, he had good protection. You got to be real careful, and, and he should know this because it's happened that you don't have a lot of time. The clock has to go off a little quicker against this defense than, than some others. As Dallas defense has held the Eagles now to just eight first downs. But that was a big one to get this drive started. Blitz. Wentz protected. Pass is caught. Down inside the 10. The rookie Goddard. 
And that's about as good a throw as Carson Wentz has made all day. It's really good. The Cowboys show too deep, but then they're going to drop down and they go single high. So he knows he's one on one and Goddard runs a good route. They're trying to get Jalen Smith out underneath that route. He's not able to and yeah, we, that, we we talked about some of the errant throws that that was that was on the money by Carson Wentz. Four minutes to play first and goal. Here's Adams. Down to the three. Damian Wilson on the stop for gain of six. Second down and goal with under four minutes to play. The Eagles, if they get a win here, they'll walk out of here with the same record as the Cowboys, but have a better division record and a tiebreaker. Dallas Cowboys with a win here over Philadelphia. They have a two-game lead in the East and the head-to-head -head advantage over the Eagles. gets his fourth of the year and with 312 left the all-important extra point is coming well you got Goddard he's gonna run the route and he's able to work through Jalen Smith Carson Wentz helps open up that window by holding off Xavier Woods 25 to safety but now is when that extra point that was missed by Elliott is a big factor in this game and this one is good. Just inside the right upright. The Eagles traded up in the draft to get Dallas Gunner. Obviously, tight end was a target for the Dallas Cowboys after the retirement of Jason Witten. And the young man who was named Dallas because of the family's love for the Dallas Cowboys gets a big one for the Eagles here in Arlington to tie the game with 312 left. Keeps making plays like that. The Dow or the Eagles fans will forgive him for having the name Dallas. Now this this Eagles defense. See what they're able to do. The defensive front has been spectacular. The secondary has made some plays, but Sidney Jones out there at corner, as we've seen here in recent drives, he's got a big target on his chest, and can he hold up? So that bottom line on the graphic Carson Wentz three for three 41 yards and the touchdown a couple of big completions to Dallas Goddard including the game tying score. Well we said hey he's going to have to be at his best on that drive and he certainly was. The drive will start at the 25 Cowboys three timeouts left Philadelphia two. Dallas winners of four straight they come in seven and five the Eagles trying to turn the tables on the Dallas Cowboys it was Dallas who got the big win at Philly on a Sunday night the Eagles on a short week the Cowboys on nine days of rest trying to come in here to Texas and get a win to tie at the top and they would have a better division record tough schedule staring the Eagles in the face at the Rams at home against Houston the next two games Prescott throws Cooper makes the play might go first play from scrimmage touchdown Cooper and Dallas was not on the Eagles roster the first eight weeks of the season and they had him up in man coverage and pressed on Amari Cooper with no safety help and as soon as Dak Prescott saw that he knew exactly where he was going to go with the football and it was just no contest good news is they scored quick the Eagles had plenty of time 
after the eight catch 180 yard two touchdown game against Washington on Thanksgiving Jerry Jones the owner and GM said Amari looks like he's making a bid for his cash the bid continues seven catches 182 yards and the two touchdowns in this game for Dallas. Yeah, you see Corey Graham, 24. He was in the middle of the field and just one-on-one. -on -one. And for a guy who is their biggest threat on the outside, I'm, I'm a little surprised. You see, here's Corey Graham. Here's the one-on-one -on -one with Devontae Bosby and Amari Cooper. And to be up press on the other side, they had Russell Douglas, who was soft. I'm a little surprised by the decision there by Jim Schwartz to come and have him up in press coverage like that. But a great job by Dallas in being able to connect because we've seen that Prescott's, he's missed some other opportunities, but that one was dropped in there nicely. As you said, plenty of time. 301, two timeouts. As we serenade Amari Cooper. Jason Garrett told us with regard to Cooper, he's a credible player that defenses have to account for, but it's done more for our confidence. Now we have the feeling that we can go attack. And it is a different feel to this Cowboy offense since they got him during their bye week before the Tennessee game. They lost that game, but they are looking for their fifth win in a row. Well, he had the big game against the Redskins on Thanksgiving night. Now this, I talked about how teams have still stacked the line of scrimmage to try to stop Ezekiel Elliott. Well, now, with a night like tonight, you've got to believe the Colts next week are going to start looking at it, and it's going to be a little different style. Wentz trying to answer. Jeffrey can't make the catch as he had gotten behind Awuzie. Almost a heck of a catch by Alshon Jeffrey. It's just a little too far out there. He lays out and almost able to haul this in. That was a tough one. The guy who played with a torn rotator cuff last year had shoulder surgery, missed the first three games, begging for more targets. Just off his fingertips, second and ten. And the Cowboys still showing man-to-man -man across the board, also with challenge across the board here. You see these corners are all up in tight coverage. Wentz throws over the middle, pass is caught, flag is thrown. There goes Goddard trying to answer. Flag is down. Goddard is in for the touchdown, but no signal. And again, the flag was thrown right around the spot of the catch, and it looks like it's coming back. I think they got Goddard at the top of this route. Let's take a look. Offense from 88. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. We play second down. And they did. I don't know that I like that call, Joe. Goddard is, he's running the route. Heath is entitled to hold his ground, but he was moving a little bit. I don't know. I'd like to hear what Mike Pereira thinks. What do you think, Mike? Was that offensive pass interference on Goddard? I don't think it is because to me, even though there's movement by the defense, understand why it's called, but he's breaking back to the inside. There's a collision right at less than five yards. I just don't think that's one that should have been called. And it was the official that threw the flag that was downfield and didn't signal the touchdown. And so Goddard flagged for the call to take points off the board. And normally they're looking for extended hands, and, and, and Goddard never extended his arms. Play action. Gregory gets there for the sack, and a flag is down. Here's the call. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 94. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down with Philadelphia. I'm anxious to see this on the replay with Gregory going down. He's trying to make the sack. And Mike Pereira, right back into the hot box you go. 
And I got the same opinion, to tell you the truth. I mean, it is a low hit, but you look for force that usually involves the shoulder or the helmet. You want defenders to wrap and take them down, and that's what he did with the arm. Well, he had no other choice if he's going to make the sack. Right, they talked about know. a forcible blow, and, and, the, and that didn't exist. So that wipes the sack away, and now up to the 30. Wentz throws, pass caught. Jeffrey out of bounds with a first down. Let's go back to the Goddard play. Yeah, here he is here, and, and coming off the ball, and like I said, you look for extended arms, and it, it wasn't that. The contact, as Mike said, was within the five yards. All is good there. And then he just works off of that. You see that on virtually every play, especially in there at the tight end position. And yeah, it's unfortunate to have these calls that go against either one of these teams that make a difference in games. The biggest one, obviously, against the Eagles to take the touchdown away. Lance Van Der Esch with a sack. And a flag is down in midfield. Well, the Eagles are pointing that it's on the Cowboys, and, and that's a lucky break for Carson Wentz. Contact. Defense, number 30. The five-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's got, against Anthony Brown. You got Darren Sproles, who's trying to block Leighton Vanderash, and it's right in front of Wentz. But here's the penalty on Anthony Brown, number 30. And that's a good call. That's a good call. You see, but here's Leighton Vander Ash coming off the line at 55, and he's trying to trying to block, be blocked by Darren Sproles, and, and Wentz should have seen that. So another another penalty that cost the Cowboys. Bringing up first down out at the 47. Pass is caught. Goddard gets nine, and his helmet comes off for the second time. To tighten that up as he just slides it right back onto his head. Well, I would think they'd let this go down to the two minute warning, but they're going to try to get one off. And they don't. When we come back, it'll be second down and one, two minutes left. Dallas Goddard, the rookie. He's had a big fourth quarter. Eagles with a ball down by seven. Two minutes left. Battle for the top spot in the NFC East. Second down and one. Play action. Wentz airs it out. Downfield has a man. Pass is caught by Aguilar. Inside the two-yard line as the officials get together and confirm the catch at their first look. Well, that's a good adjustment by Aguilar. He gets his left foot down, the right one in. Initially, it looked to me like it might have taken him out of bounds, but he he clearly was past Byron Jones. He was beat. That's a that's a great adjustment by Aguilar being able to make a play on this ball. Brilliant catch by Nelson Aguilar. Yep, and it's a great job by the officials down there seeing it. You see Byron Jones, he's, he's peeking in, and Aguilar is gone. 42 yards, the Eagles' biggest play of the day at the most important time. Let me just throw this out here now. Philadelphia has just called their second timeout. We welcome a new audience. That's us. This game has been crazy. It was six to nothing at the half. But the offense has exploded here late. Dallas Goddard with a touchdown. Two big touchdown throws from Prescott to Amari Cooper. But now just a moment ago, Nelson Aguilar. 42 yards to set up Philadelphia. And here they are, two yards away, and then a decision for Doug Peterson. Well, and they couldn't get set up, so they burned a timeout. They could have taken time off this clock. Wentz keeps. Down he goes. Play made by Smith. Jalen Smith. 
That'll bring up second down and goal. Yeah, and you think, you know, whether or not Dallas is going to burn a timeout here, and they do. And that's what I was saying. When, when, when the Eagles got the completion to Aguilar, when you have a big play down the field, Sometimes it's hard for the offensive linemen and everybody to get down there in a timely manner to where you can get a playoff and they had to burn the timeout and they could have taken time off for Forts Dallas to take one. And we'll talk about it as this drive unfolds the end of it as we welcome you into the booth. But don't forget that Doug Peterson loves what they do with two point tries. They're five for five. If they score here, that's on the board. And I would almost expect them to go for two if they score. Wentz, underneath, Sproles, splits the defenders and gets in for the touchdown. And immediately the sideline says, kick the extra point. No two-point try with a minute 39 remaining. Well, he hasn't had quite as much success this year with the fourth down calls and points, but what a job here by Darren Sproles. You're gonna see when he catches it, Late Mandarash is there to make a play, and uh, that, that's the that's what they miss this year, not having Sproles for most of the season. Elliott missed earlier in this half, his first of the year. Tie game. Dallas now will have a minute 39 with two timeouts. And just to reiterate, these Eagles five for five on two point tries coming into this game, including one last week against Washington when they were up by seven instead of making it with an extra point, an eight point lead. The Eagles went for two and got it, made it a two score game, and that's just kind of the way. Personal Peterson foul, usually does receiving it. team number 90 helmet contact against the long snapper Philadelphia has elected to enforce that penalty from the kickoff so they get to Marcus Lawrence for the helmet hit on the extra point try and here it is on Rick Lovato Mike Pereira Way in yet again. I guess the illegal contact of the helmet is a hand of the helmet. Um, it's supposed to be a crown of the helmet shot, um, but that's certainly not a foul for illegal use of the helmet, that's for sure. Here's another look at it. This brings the ball up to midfield for the ensuing kickoff. There have been 31 points scored in this fourth quarter now. Only 15 total points for the first three quarters of this game. And the hands team is out there for Dallas. Case Elliott tries an onside kick. Instead, he pops it up, trying to pin the Cowboys deep. It's Beasley on the return. And he is down at the 18-yard line. So the drive will start at the 18. They could have done Joe you think about it in the in the Eagles we talked about whether or not Doug Peterson would go for two they they could have taken the penalty and put the ball on the one yard line and, and gone for two had they have elected to do that it was on the extra point they did not elect to try it instead they kicked the extra point to tie the game and Ezekiel Elliott against Russell Douglas stays in bounds for a moment and then hops out at the 22 with a four yard game. A minute 29 left, two timeouts for Dak Prescott in what has turned into a wild game here in Arlington. You're not kidding. <laughs> Points were pretty hard to come by there for a while, but not here as of late. There's Amari Cooper and Bosby right here. Prescott Elliott first down. Interesting that Sidney Jones, who had been A out of the game for a while in the first half with 
a hamstring injury we were told from the sideline and then came back in the game was burned by Amari Cooper. He's on the sideline and Bosby as you say is back out there. He was just victimized by Cooper. Here's a pass to Cooper. Bosby can't bring him down initially and out of bounds as Trey Sullivan was there a gain of eight. Well, Jim Schwartz is trying to give a little bit of a different look. It's still Bosby one on one outside there. They, they, they have the safeties deep that you'd think, OK, too deep. But those first few plays, it was really a four cross zone. So he's still one on one. Now, the way they're lined up now, he still is. Prescott airs it out. Gallup downfield is overthrown. Second time that's happened as he got this time behind Rasul Douglas. Well, they drop down and they play one on one and, and he gets past Rasul Douglas. I don't know what Douglas is thinking, but Gallup kind of throttled down a little bit. Had he just have taken off running, I think that threw off Prescott, but Douglas would have would have been for another big play. Well, here it is on third down and two. Brett Maher has set a franchise record with a 62 yarder in this game. That's the 44 yard line of Philadelphia. In case you're wondering. Prescott flagged down. Hearns the target incomplete, but a penalty flag is thrown in the secondary. A lot of flags here, and this is a hold, which will be an automatic first down against Philly. Prior to the pass, holding defense. Number 24. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Corey Graham, who had an interception earlier in this half. Yeah, he pretty much tackles Blake Jarwin. Six, six. 46 seconds left, two timeouts. And a 23-23 game in this battle for the top spot in the NFC East. Pass is caught by Jarwin. A flag is thrown again. Jarwin had to fight for the ball, and we'll see who this call is against. I think they're going to get to a Filo, their left guard, with a hold. There is no foul in the play for holding. The result of the play stands. He's second down down. So they pick up the flag, and it was thrown here on the left side. Mike Pereira, what did you see over there? Well, to me, I liked it because as picking up the flag, because it was part of a double-team block and a stumble, so I don't think it was a foul. Here is Jarwin again having a career day. He gets a first down, and now Dallas is very close to... Enough yardage gained on this possession for Maher. It'd be a 63-yard try from this spot. But they have 28 seconds left, two timeouts. They try to take a bite out of that for Brett Maher. Yeah, usually if you're on defense, Jim Schwartz, you, you use the clock to your advantage. But with two timeouts for Dallas, they've got the whole field at their disposal. Prescott. Elliott down just outside the 40 and the timeout taken by Dallas they have one left if you're just joining us you missed this on the final play of the first half after a hold against Tyron Smith the field goal try from the other side of the 50 and a franchise record 62 yarder and to look at the distance he made it with room to spare. There's no doubt he's got a big leg. And they're, they're within range, obviously, right now, based on what he showed there in that first half. And Eagles just trying to keep him from getting it any closer. Bad snap. Prescott. Wow. That's a big, big play. As it moves the ball back outside the 45. And we're going to use their timeout. They finally did. The clock was running. You got to be real careful now. Looney snapped it right into the ground. And now the Cowboys are going to have to get more yardage to try to just give Maher a chance. They, they've got to get more yardage, but they've got to stop the clock also. 
That's a boy. That's a big, a big mistake there by Joe Looney. A loss of six on the play. Remember, it's third down and 12, so anything short of a first down or not out of bounds, the Cowboys cannot go up and spike it. It would be a fourth down play. Back into the shotgun goes Prescott. The Philly defense makes another big play, and there's Fletcher Cox. About the night Fletcher Cox has had. He's over Suofilo right here, and he just absolutely collapses the pocket. I tell you, Chris or uh, Brandon Graham was there as well. The defense, we talked about it, this defensive front really had to get it done for this Eagles defense, and the Cowboys in range. They give Maher an opportunity to win the game if Prescott just does not take a sack. But the bad snap out of the shotgun, by the way, which brings that into play. A loss of six, a loss of eight on the sack, and they went backward for 14 yards that? on their last two plays from scrimmage, and we're into overtime now officially here in Arlington. We'll have a coin toss, see who gets it. Barring a touchdown. Okay, gentlemen, overtime in the NFL. We're going to play up to one 10 minute period. Both teams are going to have an opportunity to possess the ball unless the first team on offense scores a touchdown or we have a defensive score. Each team's going to have two timeouts and all replays will be handled up in the booth. Good? You good? Okay. Coin, again, the helmet side is heads, the T side is tails. Helmet is heads, T side is tails. Philadelphia, it is your choice. Tails. Tails is the call. It is heads. You win the ball. ball. Which way you want to kick? Which way? Well, you know the rules. Dallas will have the ball to start overtime on America's Game of the Week. Eagles, Cowboys, tied. Back on a low snap, and then another lost 15 yards officially on the final two plays. And that second sack. Took away any chance in what would have been the longest field goal in the history of the league at 65 yards by Maher. So here we are, out to the 25, and here's Prescott. Right back to work. Well, this defense has been on the field a lot. This is their 81st defensive snap. The Cowboys defensively have played almost half of that. We'll see whether or not they can rally and, and make another stand the difference in time of possession and that rotation up front for the Philadelphia defense put together by Jim Schwartz has worked here's Elliott getting eight Nigel Bradham is there to make the stop second down and two pretty good start there a good push by that defensive front Trayvon Hester was able to get into the backfield, but Ezekiel Elliott makes him miss, and then he picks up a good eight yards. Second and two, back to Elliott. First down, and Moore almost lost the ball. As Malcolm Jenkins makes the stop after a gain of 10, and in two plays, the ball is already outside the Dallas 40 at their own 43. Well, you get a guy going right now, Ezekiel Elliott, he wants the football, and they need to just keep giving it to him. As you see, he's uh, not going to give it to him now. Rod Smith comes in. Malcolm Jenkins tried to force that fumble. He forced a fumble right out of the gate on the opening kickoff of this game. It looked like it might go to Philadelphia. They didn't get it. Here's one for the tight end, Schultz. Nice fake by Prescott. And Dalton Schultz is good for 16 yards. Well, they got Rod Smith who comes in, and then Prescott gets under center. So you're anticipating some type of play action or boot. And he comes off of it, Schultz. A, a, a well thrown ball by Prescott there. And here the Cowboys are knocking on the door again. 
Second catch of the game for the rookie, seventh of the year for Schultz. The Cowboys are right back where they were a moment ago. There were 21 seconds left in regulation. But again, unless the first possession ends in a touchdown, even a good field goal in this game continues, Philadelphia will get a chance to possess the ball. Second down and nine here after a one-yard carry by Elliott. Zach Martin is still out. Uh, Four-time Pro Bowl right guard with that left knee injury. He re-aggravated in the second half. Prescott steps through trouble for a moment. Flag is down and so is Prescott in the arms of Fletcher Cox. And it's against Dallas for a hold, and they're going to move him Holding back. Holding offense number 77. 10 yard penalty, replay, second down. And that is the third by my count, holding call against Tyron Smith in this game after missing the previous two. Here's Tyron Smith, and this defensive front is just suffocating. And Brandon Graham, he's a tough out. He's a hard guy to block, and Fletcher Cox is no day at the beach either. And we talked about Cox and how they were resting him early in this game a lot. And to keep him fresh, they've been on the field a lot, but he has continued to play at a high level. They accepted the penalty, which made it second down. And now here's the carry by Elliott after the catch and a gain of 10. So you could debate whether you accept that holding call or not. Either way, they're right back in the same area now facing a third and nine. Yeah, pretty much a wash. And, and I think Bosby, number 41, you know, you get in trouble when you sit back and you wait on Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, you really have to go stop him in his tracks as soon as he gets the ball. It would be a 58-yard try from here. Third down and nine. Floated for Cooper. First down and more. They got a natural pick with Cole Beasley coming off the line of scrimmage here. And he's able to pick off Rasul Douglas, who was going to be in man coverage on Amari Cooper. Those, those crossing routes, they're, they're hard when you're in man coverage, but you, you have to anticipate that when you're in that coverage because that's what teams are trying to do. 12-yard gain on third down and nine and a first down at the 28. Here's Elliott, cuts back. Through this tired defense, there's Braddon. This guy plays hard every play. Playing with a broken thumb on his left hand, and he just keeps on going. That's the 12th tackle for Nigel Braddon in this game. Carry by Ezekiel Elliott. Well, Fletcher Cox right now is on the sidelines, and you know I didn't think you'd say this about a defense that's given up 540 yards, but I think they've given all they've got. Four-yard carry by Elliott, second and six. Quick throw, and the pass is caught. That's Schultz again. And he is down one yard short of a first down. So another big third down here for Dallas. Yeah, this was not an easy completion at all. Prescott puts this ball right out where he has to. That was good coverage, actually, by Malcolm Jenkins. And here we go. Ezekiel Elliott came into this game 12 of 17 in converting into a first down on third and one. Kill, kill. Gets it. And he does not get the first down. Big stop by this Eagles defense. job that is Michael Bennett he's in the middle of that some came in from the backside I couldn't quite see who it was and, and they're gonna go for it the Cowboys are on fourth down and a long one well, the way their defense is playing they feel that 
play clock going down. They got to call a timeout. But the way their defense has played, even though the Eagles have been able to get on a roll and they've been able to string some plays together, they trust the defense that they can make a stop if they fail to pick it up here. Here's that defensive play. Nathan Gary, a linebacker, came in. I don't believe he got the tackle. He took on Olawale, and I believe it was Michael Bennett who got off the block of Lyle Collins. He did, and Bennett made the play. Such a great job by him. All these guys, really. This defense is, has been so banged up all year, as, as we've talked about throughout this game, but Michael Bennett has not been, and Fletcher Cox, and Chris Long, and Brandon Graham, and that's what this defense has been built on for the last several years. It's what helped them win the Super Bowl last season. And if they're able to pull off a win here tonight, they'll be the reason that they won this game. Fourth down and one. They pass on a 37-yard try as they go for it here. It is Elliott reached for it. Looked like he got it. But no official signal yet, and now there is first down, and it took that right arm and the reach by Elliott to pick it up. They got a push initially. Brandon Graham was there. They're trying to close Malcolm Jenkins. He's coming off the edge, and he just gets he leaves a little bit, and you can't leave anything with Ezekiel Elliott. He's too tough. He finds every crease there is. That's a great effort by Elliott to pick that up. Meanwhile, we're under three and a half minutes left in overtime. Prescott keeps. He's down near the 11. Nigel Bradham with tackle number 13, a gain of five. Remember, Philadelphia missed an extra point early in this second half. First of the year by Jake Elliott. Now, not only do the Eagles have to stop Dallas, they got to contend with the clock. Low snap. Elliott is swallowed up back at the 15. That play made by Bennett. Man, is he playing hard? A loss of three on the play. The game clock is under two and a half. Yeah, and if the Cowboys were to run this down, what a play there by Bennett. If they were to run this down and kick a field goal with no time on the clock, game's over. So here are the Eagles, big third down here to give themselves a chance. Two minutes left in this game. Third down and eight when we come back. What a day. Clock's still running. They're going to have to use a timeout. They'll have only one left. And even though they get the ball back, they're going to be pressed for time. If they don't make a stop here. The Cowboys can run it down to virtually nothing. Extra men on the rush. Pass is caught. Deflection, touchdown, Cowboys win, Amari Cooper. His third of the game, Rasul Douglas off his left hand, and to Cooper for the win. Well, Rasul Douglas is, is just sick about this. He plays it actually very well. He gets a hand on the ball, and Amari Cooper, why not? He's done everything else tonight. Why not catch the deflection for the win? The Cowboys have won five straight. They have a stranglehold on the NFC East. And 
Douglas consoled on the sideline, got a piece of it, couldn't knock it down. Or pick it. The final in overtime as the Cowboys win it in a game where they had 576 yards of offense. From Douglas to Cooper, and from me to Aaron Andrews. Joe, thank you. Amari, if you remember that final play off of Rasul Douglas, tell us what happened after that. I mean, I've been running a lot of slant routes since I got here. I beat these guys on a lot of slant routes when we first played them. That guy knew I was running the slant. If you look at the play again, I tried to kind of stem a man first to sell the fade. Knew it kind of wouldn't work. Knew I had to come back to the ball, but he just knew I would run the slant. I stayed there. Good stuff, man. Um, so I just stayed with the ball. And uh, thank God. Thank God. Well, the Cowboys are thanking you. Of course, three touchdowns today. But Jason Garrett telling us, ever since you were brought to this team, you've brought a confidence. You've brought a juice. What has it been like for you joining the Cowboys? It's been a dream come true. When I was young, and I thought about playing in the NFL. This is the experience. This is really the experience. Everything from the city, the facility, um, and just coming out here playing, winning, playing with passion. It's exciting, yeah. you know? So it's, it's been a dream come true. And having moments like that, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Joe. Amari Cooper, 10 catches, a career high 217, a career high three touchdowns, and he ends a long day of football. Dak Prescott threw for 455, a career high. There's the final back after this.